everyone. Now we're going to look at, at the third macromolecule, lipid. Lipids are the one class of large biological molecules that do not form polymers. So why do we say lipids are not polymers? That's because to form uh, to form lipids, it does not involve repetition of monomers, right? Because we know that lipids are made of different kind of smaller units. All right, so you're going to see the formation of lipids later. All right, so the three uh, main elements that we can find in lipids are so we have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So these are the three main uh, elements in lipid. Okay, so the three important groups of lipids that we're going to discuss in this chapter are fats or triglycerides, um, phospholipids, and lastly, steroids. So we do have uh, other group of lipid that we don't cover okay, in this chapter, which are waxes. So the one unifying feature of lipid is having little or no affinity for water. So what does this mean? Affinity basically means attraction between molecules. So when we say lipid have no affinity for water, so that means that lipids do not attract to water. So that's why if you try to mix water and oil uh, in a glass, for example, you can see two separate layers, right? So that, that, that's because these two have no attraction. Right. So the term that we use to describe this characteristic is hydrophobic. So hydro means water, phobic means fear. So literally, lipid means fear of water. So lipids are fear, fear of water, right? So this is because they consist mostly of hydrocarbons. So hydrocarbons uh, means that the structure of lipids are mostly made of hydrogen and carbons, and they can form non-polar covalent bonds. Right. Now, even though they do not dissolve in water, but they dissolve in organic solvents such as acetone, ether, chloroform, and alcohol. Now, we're going to look at, at the first group of lipid, which is fat or triglyceride. Now, fats and oils, are also known as esters, are formed by the process called condensation. And this process is between one molecule, so you might want to highlight this part. So it is between one molecule of glycerol and three molecules of fatty acid, right? And these molecules are linked together or joined together by ester linkage or ester bond. Okay, so this condensation process, also known as esterification, okay, again, uh, you can you can see the the smaller units that form uh, fats or triglycerides here. Okay, so glycerol is a three carbon alcohol with a hydroxyl group attached to each carbon, and fatty acid consists of a carboxyl group attached to a long carbon skeleton. So we're going to see the structure in the next slide. Right. So this is a process, uh, condensation process, uh, meaning the joining of uh, glycerol and fatty acid, okay, by condensation. Right. So this is the glycerol. So you can see glycerol here have three carbon molecules with hydroxyl attached to it. All right. And then we also have one fatty acid over here. So you can see the carboxyl at one end. Right, so condensation is dehydration. We covered that at the early of at the you know early of this chapter. All right, so we're going to remove a water molecule here. So this is uh, where we where we remove the hydrogen and hydroxyl. So together, okay, we remove the water molecules. So because of this dehydration process, so now we can form a new covalent bond over here, and that covalent bond is ester bond. Right. So from this uh, reaction, one water molecule is removed for each fatty acid joined to the glycerol. All right. So this is the final product of uh, esterification or condensation. Okay. So you can see uh, all three fatty acids are joined uh, to each carbon in the uh, in the in the glycerol. Right, so you can see uh, because we have three carbon and with three fatty acid, the three carbon in the glycerol attached to three fatty acid. So that means you have three ester linkage or three ester bonds here. Right, so and basically you have three times of condensation process, right? So you, you might want to add a byproduct over here. Right, so this is the main product, which is the triglyceride. But okay, don't forget the water molecules that produce uh, by this process. So you just add three. I'm sorry for that bad handwriting. Three water molecules. So these are the byproduct 
of uh, this reaction. So three water molecules, yeah? Okay, so like uh, I mentioned uh, just now, so fats do separate from water, okay, because water molecules uh, form hydrogen bond with each other and exclude the fat. So because, um, you know, because uh, lipids have no affinity for water, so they do not have any attraction, okay, between water and lipids. So there's no chemical bond there, right? So that's why water molecules only form hydrogen bond with them among themselves and would exclude the fat. So that's the reason of the separation uh, of fats from water. All right, now we're going to talk about fatty acid. Fatty acids are vary in length, means it, it differ in the number of carbon and also in the number and location of the double bonds. Now we're going to look at fatty acid. So generally we have two types of fatty acid. So we have saturated or in Malay means tepu and another one is unsaturated fatty acid or tak tepu. Okay, right. So we're going to look at, at, the, um, at the first one, uh, the first fatty acid, which is the saturated fatty acid. Saturated fatty acids have the maximum, okay, it has a, the maximum number of hydrogen and also no double bonds. Okay, so basically uh, the fatty acids are saturated with hydrogens. All right, example here is stearic acid. So stearic acid, um, uh, you know, uh, one character of stearic acid is that they are waxy solid at room temperature uh, and they have this softening effect. Okay, and you can find stearic acid a lot in products like cosmetics, shampoos, uh, soaps and you know some also use as food additive so you might want to try and look at your shampoo label at the back of the uh, at the back of your shampoo bottle so you might find stearic acid there so stearic acid is uh, is actually uh, saturated fatty acid right and the shape the structure of the molecules are straight molecules now these are the structures okay uh, of uh, saturated uh, fatty acid okay so fats that made from saturated fatty acids are called saturated fats now um, I do find some students to be confused with the word fats and fatty acid right so fats means you know fats are produced when you join saturated fatty acid to glycerol that's when you refer this as saturated fats but saturated fatty acid means we are looking or we are referring to this to this one so this is saturated fatty acid this is saturated fatty acid. The whole thing is saturated fats. Okay, so um, I hope you guys don't get confused with the two two terms there. All right, All right. So these are saturated fats, uh, and they are solid at room temperature. So like I mentioned just now, the example in the previous slide, stearic acid. So stearic acid are basically waxy solid at room temperature. Yeah. Okay, and most animal fats are saturated. Now we're going to look at the second type of fatty acid. All right, so unsaturated fatty acids have one or more double bonds, right? And we have two examples here. We have oleic acid and linolenic acid. Okay, why do we have two examples here? The last one, the saturated fatty acid, we, we have one, but this time we have two. So the difference between these two is that uh, we just want to show you that we have two types of unsaturated fatty acid, right? So oleic acid, Okay, it's actually came from, I think you can find them in olive oil, right? And these are mono, okay, sorry. And this is uh, mono unsaturated, okay, mono unsaturated, yeah? Okay, so I'm going to write here. So you might want to add a bit in your notes. So this is mono unsaturated. Right? So what does it mean by monounsaturated? Monounsaturated means they have one double bond. Okay. Sorry for that bad handwriting, guys. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, what about linolenic acid? So linolenic acid is also unsaturated fatty acid, but this one is polyunsaturated. Yeah, polyunsaturated saturated okay so if this one is mono and this one is poly so that means poly means many so that means that this one would have more than one double bond 
more than one dot one. All right. So that shows that um, in unsaturated fatty acid, we have sub group under unsaturated fatty acid. So we have mono unsaturated and poly unsaturated, right? Now regarding the shape, uh, the shape of unsaturated fatty acids are bent. Okay, so the bend is due, so bend, yeah, bend, bend here, bend. Okay, so the bend is due to one or the, due to the presence of one or more double bonds. And they can still accept one more hydrogen. Okay. Alright, so this shows unsaturated fats again. Okay, unsaturated unsaturated fats means uh, you know the fatty acids are all joined to the glycerol so that's why we call it unsaturated fats and because we have unsaturated fatty acid here oops sorry oh my gosh so because we have unsaturated fatty acid here okay so that's why we call this as unsaturated fats okay so fats made from unsaturated fatty acid are called unsaturated fats or you know we usually call them as oils and they are liquid at room temperature right so uh, plant fats and fish fats are usually unsaturated okay moving on to the next one okay so this shows a comparison between saturated and unsaturated fat so again you can look uh, you know at the structural formula of uns uh, of saturated fats so you can see all the straight molecules and this one has a band shape and also some example uh, and also example here right so we have butter over here and also some oils over here all right so that is the two common examples of saturated and unsaturated fats that we can find perhaps in your kitchen at home yeah a diet rich in saturated fats may contribute to cardiovascular disease through plaque deposits so there's one process that actually can um, increase the consumption of saturated fats in our body and that is hydrogenation so hydrogenation is the process of converting unsaturated fats to saturated fats by adding hydrogen right so this is a process hydrogenation Okay, so basically it, it is adding hydrogen okay to unsaturated fatty acid so that it becomes saturated fats now this is very common in a uh, food industry um, uh, you know when uh, where this process okay would likely to uh, prolong the shelf life of fat product right okay hydrogenating vegetable oils also creates unsaturated fats with trans double bonds i believe you must have heard about trans fat before right okay so this trans fat may contribute uh, more than saturated fats to cardiovascular disease okay, again um, in food industry this process uh, of converting uh, cis uh, fat cis, cis fat okay let me write the word cis fat here okay so cis fat is uh, the original or the normal uh, unsaturated fats okay so basically cis fats uh, is the good one and to convert uh, you know the, the fat into trans fat okay this involves what we call as partial hydrogenation okay all right so this happened you know uh, you know like i mentioned just now um it happens to basically to prolong okay the shelf life uh you know to make it last longer okay of these fat products okay so why do we say trans fat may contribute or you know in, in they are more harmful uh, to us compared to saturated fats okay it is believed that trans fat um decrease our hdl so hdl is the good cholesterol and trans fat also increase okay the ldl so ldl is the is the bad cholesterol okay so if we consume a lot of trans fat so you know you would increase the level of ldl in your body so that one would be the culprit okay of cardiovascular disease right 
Okay, so uh, you know, uh, you know, in the previous slide just now, I have you know uh, show you the the conversion or the conversion of cis fat to trans fat. So cis fat, so cis. Uh, cis means that the, the you know the location or the position of the hydrogen would be on the same side like this one so you can see the hydrogen is on the same side so that's why we call it as cis fat okay or cis double bond here that produce cis fat okay and after partial hydrogenation okay it transform get the fat into trans it, it uh, sorry it transform uh, the double bond into trans double bond Okay, that would ultimately convert uh, the fat into trans fat, right? So this, that's, uh, you know, how they convert cis into trans fat, okay? All right, so we're done with the first group of uh, lipid. Now we're going to move on to the second one, which is phospholipids. Okay, so phospholipids are the most uh, important lipid in our plasma membrane. Right, so in a phospholipid, two fatty acids and a phosphate group are attached to uh, glycerol. So the structure would be quite different from uh, triglycerides or fats. Okay, where phospholipid in phospholipid, we only would have two fatty acid. Okay, two fatty acid, and also we have phosphate group and also a glycerol. Right. Okay, so the two fatty acid tails are hydrophobic, but the phosphate group and its attachment form a hydrophilic head. So basically, phospholipid molecule have two uh, segments. So they have uh, the head, the, the, the head segment and the tail segment. So the head segment is hydrophilic. Okay, means it loves water. Okay, but the tail part would be hydrophobic. Okay. Okay, so this is a more detailed structure of a phospholipid molecule. All right, so you can see a glycerol here, just like uh, the glycerol that we have discussed earlier. Right, so it is a three carbon molecule. All right, and then you have two fatty acid, okay, attached to the glycerol. So you can see the first one attached to the first carbon and the second one, which is the unsaturated fatty acid. Obviously, you can see the kink here or the band. Okay, that is due to the cis double bond attached to the second carbon. Now, on the third carbon, we, we would have a phosphate here. Okay, a phosphate, uh, which is a polar molecule and also a choline, right? So, why do we say the, the head and the tail is different? So, the head uh, is hydrophilic. It's because of the presence of the phosphate, yeah? Because the phosphate is polar. So, that makes the head part would be hydrophilic, all right? So maybe you want to um, put put a note here. We we'll just uh, write down polar. Okay. So the polarity of the phosphate, okay, would uh, you know uh, causes okay the head part to be hydrophilic. Okay. So when phospholipids are added to water. Okay, they would self-assemble into a bilayer with the hydrophobic tail pointing toward the interior. So the structure of phospholipids results in a bilayer arrangement found in the cell membrane. So remember, our cell membrane is phospholipid bilayer. Okay, and phospholipids are the major component of all cell membranes. So we're going to uh, further and detail uh, discuss about phospholipid later in chapter 3. Okay. So this is what we talk about in the, in the previous slide. So you can see, okay, when you put phospholipid in water, so you can see the hydrocarbons are somehow attached to each other, right? So that's why we say phospholipid bilayer because the hydrocarbon would uh, try their best to avoid water because they are so afraid of water. Remember that, yeah? Okay, so this is the phospholipid bilayer. All right. Okay, moving on to the next uh, and the last uh, group of lipids, steroids. Okay, steroids are lipids characterized by a carbon skeleton consists of four of four fused rings, and one example of steroids are cholesterol. So cholesterol is uh, an important steroid. It is also a component in animal cell membrane. Again, we're going to see uh, cholesterol in chapter three. You know the, the role of cholesterol in our cell membrane in chapter three. Okay, so steroids are classified as lipids uh, due to the insolubility in water. 
right? And also their solubility in non-polar solvent. Remember the, the, the examples of non-polar solvent just now? Okay, so one example that you, you know, that, that is, I think the most easy to remember is alcohol, right? Okay. Alright, so this is the structure of a cholesterol. So remember in, in our previous slide, um, one distinct characteristic of steroid is, is that they have four fused rings. So you can see the four fused ring here. So this makes them very easy to, to identify. Alright, so that's all for lipids. I'll see you again in the next